Hi, good to have you back. Initially, I developed this class as a fixed sequence that is supposed to build up on arm strength, core strength, hip opening and shoulder opening, actually, for people who have done a lot of beginners classes and want to move into intermediate direction or who are already in an intermediate level and want to move into advanced. So it's going to take you through a warm-up, a hip opening and arm balance sequence, the basic inversions and some extra stretches. I hope you enjoy this. Grab your mats and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I have Ayumi here today to help demonstrate for the intermediate class. So you come to the top of the mat and we'll just arrive for a moment. Close your eyes. And try and feel your feet on the ground. Breathing all the way down to your toes and exhale through your spine, out of your head. Inhale one more time, all the way through to your soles and exhale, let go. If you'd like to have an intention for this practice, I invite you to just ask yourself, what do I want or what do I need? And the first thing that pops into your mind, whatever that is, might be the thing that you might want to concentrate on. And if it's something you want to let go of, you don't want to have, then maybe try and concentrate on letting it go. If there's no such thing in your head, you want to concentrate on your breathing. If you're more advanced, you can do ujjayi breathing for the practice, but I recommend at least to breathe as normal as you can, not particularly deep. And then let's open the eyes. Inhale, we stretch up. We do a tiny sun salutation before we start. Exhale. It's mainly meant as a breathing exercise. Inhale, lift. And exhale, just the right leg back. And stay here. Breathe into your right hip flexor. If you feel the stretch, lock the right knee, push the right heel back. And then try and breathe calm, natural breathing. If you're cold and you are used to ujjayi, then of course for the warm up, that's a good option. Push into the ground and bring your left foot back. Round your space between the shoulder blades and try and really find that strength in your shoulders, your arms but shoulders away from your ears, belly to your spine. And let's just go slowly down, knees down, chin and chest. Inhale, lift. And push back. Stay here, breathe. Find your heels, the back of your legs, stretch. You are sitting bones up and relax your neck. Good, inhale, right leg forward, stretch your chest, lift up. So try and really lock that left leg to get a maximum stretch in your left hip flexor.
And with the next inhale, step forward, stretch your chest, exhale, lower down. Inhale all the way up, stretch up. You can stretch straight or back bend if you like. And exhale, just slowly come forward again. Remember, it's continuous breathing. Inhale, lift up. Just for the warm up. And exhale, left foot back. Stay and breathe. Right foot back. Lift the chest forward, but round the upper spine a little bit. Pull your belly to the spine. Legs tight, slowly lower down Chaturanga and stay. <laughs> you can try. Good. Lift your chest. Urva Mukha Svanasana. Push back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay. Lengthen the back, the sides of the body, sitting bones up. Relax the head. Inhale, left foot forward. Stretch the chest. Very nice. Good, looking better already. Remember to pull the shoulders away from your ears. No stress in the neck. And then come forward, lift the chest, exhale down. Inhale, lift up, stretch up. Back if you like. And slowly come forward right away again. You can interlace your fingers this time. Stretch forward. Breathe. If you need to bend your knees still, that's fine. Not completely warmed up yet. If you can straighten your legs, do so slowly. Hands down, lift up the chest. Jump or step, now it's your choice. And lower down. Lift the chest. And push back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, stay. Breathe for a moment. Lengthen your heels down. Try and make sure the outer side of your feet is somewhat parallel to the mat. And your arms straight pushing into the ground with the palms. And inhale, right leg forward. Come into warrior one, so you bring the left foot down. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale, lower down. If you're more advanced, you can lift the leg up and come down like this. Otherwise, just bring both feet to the ground. Push back. Other side, left foot forward, right foot in. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale. Pull up while you lower, if you like. Push back. Let's do one more round with the next breath. Okay, right leg forward. Stretch up, lower your hips. Exhale, step back, lift and push. Right foot in, left foot forward, stretch up. And exhale, lower down. Lift up, push back. Beautiful, just stay here. Find your breath to be calm. Good. With the next inhale, jump or step forward. Lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Stretch up. And arms down side. We're going to do a salutation we know from the gauche 
secret. It's called God salutation. Your feet together. We're going to start together. A big step with the right foot. Stretch up at the same time. You're on the toes on the left side, pushing the heel back, locking the left knee. Stretch up and go back as much and as far as you can. Change. Turn around. Sit low. Stretch up. Lock the knee. Push the heel back. Come onto the ball of the foot and then stretch back. Beautiful. Right knee forward. Come close. Stretch up. Tuck your chin in forward on your knee or thigh if you can. Arm straight, fingers between the first and second toe. So there's only a three inch, 12 centimeter gap between your heel and your right knee. The right foot is flat and straight back. Compression on the front. Inhale, lift up. And Stretch back as much as you can. Change, come up. Turn around, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Usually this is meant to be in four directions. In this class it's only two directions. Stretch up, exhale, down. Arms straight, compression of the front, your yeah, abdomen. Foot is flat, inhale, come up and stretch back. Come up and right away turn to the side. So I'm turning to this, I don't care which way you turn <laughs> and bring your right foot out, sit low into warrior two and breathe, stay lean back, find your breath again, stretch your chest and lower your right arm. Elbow for Trikonasana, go side, stretch your left arm up and sit a little lower. Both arms stretching each other, keep stretching up and back. So you twist your spine a little bit. And change, straighten the right leg. And come to the center with the right foot, left foot out, excess it. Sit low, stretch up, breathe. And Trikonasana. Gustai, stretch up and down, opposite directions, lift up. Maybe your shoulder will touch the chin at some point. And then you twist back. Lock the right knee, change. You're gonna turn the left foot back and the right foot in. I'm gonna bring the left hand forward, stretch forward and exhale, lower down. Very nice. If you cannot reach the floor, you can push the back hand against the shin, but ultimately you want to reach here. Pull your right hip back, push into the right ball of the foot, right arm up. Pull your belly in, so you're actually twisting in the spine. That's what it's meant to do. It's a great warm up for your hamstring and your right hip. Breathe gently. <laughs> Gather yourself if you fall. It's normal. It's actually, if you're not doing it regularly, 
quite a difficult posture, even looks easy. Change to the other side, turn the right foot in and the left foot out, and stretch the right arm forward. Exhale, lower down. Push against the ground, pull your left hip back, lift up. Lock the left knee, breathe. Now make sure, are you me? Pull your left hip back more, yes. And then lengthen the spine forward and then open up with the shoulder, that's it. Change, slowly come back out and forward again. We step forward, good. Stretch up and sit low. We're gonna do a little spine crack. <laughs> Stretch and bring your left elbow on the outside of your right knee. So you're gonna try and pop your vertebras if you're not warmed up yet. <laughs> Maybe that's going to happen for you. Your hands should be in front of your chest, in front of your sternum, right shoulder away from your ear. Bring the weight into your heels. Look up and change. Inhale up. And the right side. Stay low. Bring your knees in the same line. They want to be in one level. Push against the outside of your left thigh, just above the knee, left shoulder away from your ear, breathe, the weight is in the heel, and change, inhale, switch up, one hand stay, and slowly, exhale, lower down and touch your forehead towards your shins, now in this pose, Uttanasana, we want to try to go as far back as possible, but if that's not happening for you, no problem. So you start with bending the knees and bringing the thighs and the belly together. And you want to like bring your head down. Once you have that, you want to straighten the legs a little bit more. If you are more advanced, go ahead and lock the knees, bring the belly to the thighs, chest to the knees, face to the legs below the knees and then walk your hands back as much as you can to lengthen from the core forwards and down. Lengthen the lower spine. It's like stretching pose, only standing. Change. Very nice. Breathe. Okay, very slowly we're gonna roll up, gently. Good. <laughs> I'm dripping already. Let's go there. <laughs> Told you it's not so cold today. Okay, so let's go a little bit to the back side of the mat. I'm going to do Uttita Hashta Parangushtasana. So bring your feet together, your hands on your hip. And I'm going to grab the big toe. Yeah, with the right hand. Now first, lock the left knee. The more you contract the thigh in the front, the more your left hamstring can relax. Lift up the chest and kick your heel forward. Now if you're not completely straightening, it's fine. It's not a problem. But over time you want to reach there, so don't tell yourself every day, oh, I can't do it, you know. You can, it's just a matter of time. Lift the chest. Breathe. And then bring it to the outside. Good, very nice. Keep it locked, left knee locked, yeah. Chest up, breathe. You can look in the other direction if you like. Nice, and now you turn back. Bring the heel forward again. Bring your right hand to your hip and stay up. Yeah, it's a mean one. Breathe, stay. It's three. And two. Hold there. One. Okay, slowly lower down. Now we're just going to merge into balancing stick and arm split. So I'm going to start here. Stretch forward. Just bring your hands, palms together and cross the thumbs. Strong grip. 
lock the left knee. Keep stretching your arms and leg apart. And then you're going to lower your hands. Why do you lift your right leg up? And lift the chest. So it's a back bend. Arms up, your palms are facing out. And your right leg is up, 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 up. In the sky. Good. And then bring your hands down underneath your shoulders and lower down more until you reach standing split. If this is nothing that you can do, then you just try and stay here. Bring more weight into the hands, almost like you want to do a handstand. And you just stretch the leg up. That is how you reach there, okay? Strong left leg, making sure nothing is gonna hurt. If you are already in a split position, you can do the splits, no problem. Then you can grab with the left hand, and pull, and the right leg up. And if you like, I mean, if you can balance, you can join with the right hand. I think my balance not so good today. Okay, <laughs> we just accept it. And then lower down and squat down for a moment so that left leg gets a break. <laughs> Good, okay, you did very well. And then slowly come up again. We'll do it on the other side. <laughs> Ayumi was scared it's not warm enough, but it is. <laughs> it's the postures. Okay, push your right foot down and grab your hand onto the hip and the other left hand onto left toe. Lift the chest, gather yourself. Focus one spot and kick. So when you have a lot of balancing trouble, especially when we change to the outside, just make sure you're looking on one fixed spot, on your wall, somewhere, another person. Oh, maybe the wall is better. Another person often makes it harder because they move. Lift the chest up more, good. And then, very good. So pull the shoulder a little bit back. Yes. And then slowly come forward. Breathe and stay up. Up, up, up. <laughs> it's three. Good. You can do it. Chest up. Two. Strong core. One. Okay. Slowly lower down and all the way back. I know. <laughs> Right leg tight, stretch your arms forward for balancing stick. So you want to stretch completely apart. Lock the right knee, lock the left knee. Breathe. And then very slowly lower your hands, then bring them up. Oopsie. And hands, palms going out. Lifting the left leg up, chest up, and higher. And then slowly bring hands down. I get a cramp on my foot every time. It's just normal. <laughs> if you don't do it a lot, you know, if you do it every day, probably not a problem. Okay, so lean again, like I said, the way into your hands. If this is troubling for you, if you already are in a close split position, you can grab with your right hand around your right ankle. Pull the right elbow behind the calf muscle. Pull with the left hand too, if you can. Finish or not. <laughs> and lower down. Let's squat down one more time. Okay. Just a little, make a tiny ball. Just relax. Good. Okay, straighten your legs one more time. And we're slowly coming into separate leg stretching. So we're going to step wide again. We're going to do two variations. Just stretch forward for now. The first one is also the one that you might want to do. Keep doing as a beginner. Pushing your hands down 
as much as you can. Lifting the chest up, lock the knees to be in a slight back bend. Now that's already hard. For some people they have to like even be on blocks. I recommend you try doing it on the fingertips. Maybe you can reach, you know, you never know. And then you walk your hands back a little bit. Make sure you lean the weight forward because most beginners have the problem to bring the butt back instead of forward. And that's when they are like, I cannot reach. You can just change the weight. Okay, bring the weight forward into the toes and walk your hands all the way back. Elbows are in, 90 degree angle, shoulders away from your ears. Mm -hmm. So you can walk your hands back more, are you me? Uh, all the way to the corner of the mat. No, the other side. That way you can see it. Look at me. So like here. So you have your hands. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Just like that. And now shoulders away from your ears. Mm -hmm. Lock the knees. Stay. Lengthen the spine. Okay, very good. So you can choose to stay right here if this feels comfortable for you. Or if you want to switch, you can just bend your knees for a moment to relax the hamstrings. And then you can bring your hands on, together on the back and slowly tighten the thighs again and go forward. This is a little bit more core strength than the other one because you're trying to go down now with the head reaching to the floor in between the feet with only your core as a stability. You want to stretch your arms away from your body. One day they would reach the floor. It doesn't have to happen today, you know. It's normal not to be very flexible in the shoulders, but you will get there if you keep doing this. Breathe, lengthen the spine. Weight is in the toes, remember? Yes. Good. One more. Change, okay. Beautiful. And then you bring your hands down and lift the chest and you're gonna hop, hop. Your feet back into Malasana. Now this can be a challenge for people who have tight hips. Even, um, my hip is often hurting in this one. So if that happens to you and you cannot even bring the heels on the floor, then I would, I would rather have you have the heels on the floor and the butt up and stay like this. And then gradually, as you do this more often, you will come down rather than being like this, okay? Because that is gonna go more likely into your knee pain. So rather stay here, but therefore do it correctly in the base, okay? Your toes are always in the same line as your knees and you're gonna push your elbows out and you're gonna push your knees in. Lift the chest and breathe. Stay here, good. We're gonna do some shoulder opening. That's uh, Ayumi's favorite. <laughs> she doesn't know what's coming, but I know she likes it. Okay, breathe and stay, chest up. Good, okay, so for the beginners, this posture will be just arm in front of the shin, best if not the elbow is touching, but the triceps, and the hand is down and the right arm up, okay? If you're not a beginner anymore, you bring your arm in between your thigh and your calf, and you want to still be able to move your elbow, right? Bring the left hand down around 40 degrees away from the midline and then stretch your right arm up. Breathe and stay. Try and get the weight back into the center. And if you like, if you want to go further, you don't have to, you can grab your fingertips, pants, or wrist or forearm, depending on how far you get on your back. 
looking up, right shoulder back, breathe. Now, if you want to go farther, and you can, then you want to lift up with the butt and bring a feet hip width apart, just like that. Belly in, straighten your both legs, right shoulder back, looking up again, past your right shoulder. And if you still want to go further, bring the weight into your right foot, lift up with the left heel, belly in, lift the chest. Good. Keep lifting. And if you're there, focus one spot. I only focus. Stretch up the leg. Lift up the spine. And slowly come back down. Now, we're going reverse it exactly the way we came in. You straighten the legs, you look up. You open your feet. Sit down, left hand down, right arm up. Now move your hand a little bit like the queen wave. <laughs> Relax the shoulder and then bring your arms back inside. Knees squeeze in, elbows squeeze out. Push out. Good, now your lower spine is getting a good stretch already, right? Let's do the other side. As a beginner, again, in front of the shin and the arm up, and you're just gonna stay in this position. If you're more advanced, arm in between thigh and calf, right hand is down, 40, 45 degree angle, left arm lift up, look up past your left hand, breathe. My right back is a little bit tight today. And then grab your pants, fingers, hands, wrists, or um, whichever it is. Look up. Slowly bring your feet together. Feet hip width apart. Looking up past your left shoulder. If you want to go further, lift the right heel. Push the left foot into the ground. Lift your spine. Hmm. Focus, right leg up eventually when you're ready. Good, and then slowly lower down. <laughs> Don't worry, it's normal to get. It's really hard to balance in the beginning. It happened to me too. Right hand down, left arm up. It's just when I teach, it's easier. <laughs> When I practice, I also fall a lot. Push your elbows out. Squeeze your knees in. Lift the chest. Very nice. Good. And then let's just sit back and bring the feet forward. Let me think. We can rest for a moment. Let's rest a tiny second. And relax on the back. Inhale and exhale. Try and let go. Your body is heavy. Use whenever you get rest. You don't know when is your next break. Let's do a little stretch while we're here. So bring your left foot across your right thigh and bring the left knee out again. And then you're gonna bend your right knee. Bring the left hand in, the, in between the both legs and the right hand from the outside and you're gonna grab across your shin. Perfect. Flex this foot and the other foot you can let, relax. And then you're gonna pull it towards your chest so that's going to be hard in the beginning. <laughs> Don't worry. And then pull, pull, pull to the chest. One day you want to touch. But then you're going to relax that head back again. And now you want to touch the leg to the chest eventually in the future. And exhale your lower spine down. 
Now my hips are so tight at the moment, I can't even do it, but I'm sure you're <laughs> doing great. <laughs> Let's keep pulling. Lengthen the spine. Every exhale, a little bit lower with the lower spine. Change, okay. I'm gonna do the thing on the other side. Bring your right foot onto your left thigh, knee out, both knees in. So this foot is flexed and the lower foot is relaxed. And you're gonna stretch your right hip as much as possible. So, pull to your chest, pull your shoulders down, and then every exhale, very slowly, lower your body, your lower spine. Eventually, it will lengthen and your hip will loosen up. Maybe for some 20 days, for some 20 years, you know? It's okay. Change. All right. Now you bring both legs back down to the ground. I'll do a little roll up. So not exactly a sit up, similar. Bring your arms up over your head, flex your feet. I'm gonna he bring heels to the floor and very slowly just roll up. And you want to just roll in right away. And you say, pull the toes. Good. All right. So next one is a fun one. It's for, <laughs> for the core. So it's finger stand, but we first do uh, quite, um, something more like handstand. It's not handstand, though. <laughs> so it's just on the hands. Easy finger stand. Let's call it like that. So finger stand is going to be on the fingertips. Angushasana. This is hastasana. So you bring your hands next to your thighs. You're going to push them down. If you need to, you can take blocks. It's easier for the beginners. And then you're going to push your um, butt up, feet together. Eventually, both legs in the air. I didn't do this for a long time. <laughs> it's normal if you, you know, if you're doing like Ayumi, very good training. So you're going to bring your butt up and the feet are staying low. Eventually they will lift. It just takes a little bit. Yes, we just need to do it every day. Then you can do it in like two weeks. No problem. Really, it's that easy. It's like other things, flexibility, not so easy. This one, much easier to get. Okay, for the finger stamp, you want to get your thumb... 90 degree angle towards your leg, um, under your butt cheek, and the middle finger is 90 degree to the leg as well. Bring them both in, elbows in, exhale, shh, touch the forehead to the knees, lift the butt up even higher, and keep your feet in the air, breathe. Lift the chest. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> oh, that was close though. So if, you, if it burns in your thighs, then you're doing the right thing. It's just, it's our core. The core goes from here to here. It's not just abs. Okay, bring your hands back behind you. Somewhat 20 centimeter behind your hips. Bring the feet hip width apart. And let's stretch a little bit in tabletop. Relax your head back, breathe, stay here. The butt up a little bit more, yes. Very nice. And then slowly lower down. Yes. Good. Stretch forward. We're going to do, uh, oh, actually, we can stay here. We're going to do Navasana, easy way. So feet together, knees together. First thing, you're going to hold on to your shins. And just gonna try and sit on your sitting bones. Lift the chest up and get as close together with your knees as you can. Yes, very good. And the spine is up. The second state is to go the shins parallel. Yeah. And the third state is to get 
the legs up and loosen the arms, right? So you have your options. Keep breathing, keep the chest up. Yes, you can go parallel if you like. Or you can squeeze them, yes. It's fine, not hold them, just squeeze your arms, yes. You need to a little bit carry your, your weight. And then slowly lower down again. Very nice. Purna, what, what was it? Purvadanasana, something like that. Bring your hands behind, <laughs> let me think. Lift the hips, straight legs, push the hands into the ground. It's Purvatanasana, yes. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. So we're going to do a little bit, a little bit arm balance. Okay? So bring, um, actually, we can try and get up without the hands, okay? So feet together, knees open. This is the easiest way to get up without the hands. And just, yeah, good. And come forward, very nice. Okay, bring your hands down just in front of you and bring your feet just behind the wrists for crow pose. Grab the floor with the fingertips. Mm -hmm. Lift your knee into your armpit. Now you can bend your elbows a little bit in the beginning and then you want to eventually uh, straighten the arms. If you're new to crow, just one foot is fine. Keep the butt lifted, keep the chest lifted, and just bring one foot up, and then alternate with the other foot, okay? Otherwise, if you can do both feet, go ahead, both feet up. And if you can, straighten your legs, uh, sorry, your arms. <laughs> straighten your legs is also interesting. You can do chaturanga like this, but you don't have to. All right, good, that was crow pose. So go ahead and uh, take a pause and and try it again if you like. And uh, let's roll the wrist for a moment. And then we can do a, we're gonna do a short class. So we're gonna do a peacock, bringing the knees out very wide and your feet somewhat uh, tucked. And the hands are going fingers back to the feet behind the line where the knees are, right? Gonna push the hands into the ground, elbows in, go into your abs. Push against the floor. I'm gonna be on my fingertips, you can be flat, okay? Lift the chest and bring your feet back. So just lift it in, just one leg. First one leg back. Just um, on the floor. Yes, and then eventually you want to lift the legs and keep the chest up. So if you are struggling like are you me right now, you can, you can do it like this. Look, you, you're in this setup, same setup. Okay, you bring your elbows in and you bring your head down. And then from here you can be flat or bring your thumb down. I don't know which way you want. And you, you're just gonna straighten one leg and then you straighten the other leg. Yes, you can do it, good. And then lift the head back up again. <laughs> okay, so that is the thing you can work on, you know? Eventually, first lift the head, then the legs. Because legs much harder than the head, okay? For you, actually, could be that legs is easier because you have a long body. So then it turns around, but generally still uh, quite some upper body strength to lift the legs. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do one leg peacock. So you're gonna do uh, the left foot, you're gonna bring it forward, and the right knee is down like in, will you marry me, pose. <laughs> and then bring your left arm underneath, left shoulder underneath, exactly. Shoulders underneath, right? And then left hand goes exactly in the same line as the right knee. Got it? Then you bring the right hand in front. That's the free hand. You're gonna bring it in front on top of the foot. And you're gonna bring it on top of your thigh. Now, if this hand is too much forward, you're not gonna reach your thigh. It has to be in the same line as the knee. Got it? Good. 
Now, push that elbow against your foot. Now, if you're creating a knee pain right now, then I advise you to stop or change the position a little bit <clears throat> and take care of yourself, right? Push your elbow back, wrap your foot around your triceps. I do have a lot of knee pain uh, generally, and this one most of the times I can do. So it's just, it's the technique in the angle. Lift the leg up and lift the chest up. Yeah, so you just want to bring the right leg back. <laughs> Don't worry, okay. It's very close, actually, I think you can bring your hands back more. You want to try one more time? So you can, yes, you push your elbow back against the foot and then you wrap the foot around, wrap the foot, like really wrap it, yes, and good. Now lean more weight forward, more weight forward, yes, and then bring the chest closer to the ground. Oh, that was very good. Yeah, okay, so if you're slipping off, it's, um, it's either you're very slippery or you have no strength. So maybe it's a mixture. But <laughs> let's do the other side and see if it's better. Usually I think this side for both of us is worse, but we can try. Um, so that comes through practice. You don't have to worry about it, right? So left knee is back, right foot is forward. Right shoulder goes underneath, right hand goes in the same line as the left knee. Free hand, left hand, goes, grabs the foot and brings it up onto the thigh. Good. Now you push your left elbow against your foot and you wrap the foot around you, flexing the toes against the triceps. And you push against the floor, lift the chest and the leg. So you have to bring your weight forward, otherwise you can't lift up. If your weight is still on the knee, you know, ah, that was good. Yeah, you should try one more time too. Look, you're doing this action with the foot. You're like really pushing against it with this part. You want to try one more time? Yes, good. Very nice. Careful, slowly, slowly. Push against the elbow, against the foot. Yes. Mm. Your left hand a little bit more up, more back. Yes, and now flex the foot, flex the foot. Yes, that's it. Now lean forward, all the weight forward. You're scared. <laughs> Okay, chicken chip. That's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> okay, good. Next time, right? So sit down in Virasana for now. I'm gonna um, uh, relax here for a moment. If this is hard for you, first you're gonna cross your feet and sit like this, and then you're gonna try and bring your feet a little bit underneath the butt, and eventually next to the butt, right? You can open your knees as much as you need to. Just make sure that the heel is touching the hip because then the knee is just hinging and not twisting. All right, so I can do it like this today. It's a good knee day. Lift your chest. I'm gonna bring your arms up and breathe. Just stay here for a moment, lengthen your spine, stretch up from the floor, lean back more and try and make a Straight spine. Yeah, that's it. Change. Okay. So we're going to go a little bit back. You can stay there. Um, a little bit back with the right elbow and the left elbow. You push against the outside of your feet and then you lower down, right? Lower back. Now, if you're a beginner, you want to just lift the chest and bring the head back and grab your elbows maybe. Or bring the back of the head and grab your elbows. Both versions are fully fine. If you are a little bit more advanced, however, you can open your knees a little bit, lengthen the lower spine, so try and nearly flatten the back, and then bring your arms flat on the ground and eventually bring the knees back together. It's just slightly more intense on the stretch, right? Just breathe.
good. Slowly come back up. Push your hands against your feet. Elbows against the floor. Come back up. Beautiful. And we're going to do Triyang Mukha Ika Pada Paschimottanasana. So right foot forward. So the left knee is bent. And your both knees should be together. It's not so easy to keep it like this, but that's the idea, okay? Left, lift your chest and stretch forward. And come forward to lean and stretch. Now you can, if you are very flexible, grab with the left hand around the right wrist. Like this. Yeah, but the other way around. Yes, perfect. And then stretch more forward. Try and keep the knees together. Keep the weight in the center. Not so easy. Head down. Lengthen your spine. Change. Other side. I'm going to stretch the left foot out and the right foot back in. Just like we did before, lift the chest, slowly come forward, knees together, keep the weight in the center, this time the right hand grabs the left. Keep stretching forward. So uh, as a beginner, you want to first touch the forehead on the knee, and then the nose, then the mouth, eventually the chin is touching the shin, lengthen the spine. Knees together, breathe. Change, okay. Open this leg to the side and create somewhat 90 degree angle. Bring your left hand onto the outer side of your right knee. Stretch your right arm up and over to your left foot. Now, if you are a beginner, probably you're somewhere here, and otherwise you will come lower. Grab the foot from the outside, and turn open. If you cannot grab the foot, you just keep lifting the right chest, thoracic uh, body open. And pull your right sitting bone back to the floor and open your chest to the ceiling. And change. Oh, that looked very good, Ayumi. It's a good stretch, is it? Okay, other side. Let's, um, let's just bring this leg out first. And this leg in again. And we open up 90 degree angle again. If this is very uncomfortable, obviously, you can go into Janu Shushasana variation. For me, and most of my students, this is easier. Some people have a knee pain where it's easier to do the other way, okay? Right hand to the outside of this leg. Lift your left arm and stretch over. If this is all you do, that's fine. Just keep lifting that chest, right? The rib cage. And otherwise, you want to just go as far as you can. Keep stretching. Be gentle. Don't be mean. <laughs> Don't go fast. And keep breathing. Pull your left sitting bone back to the floor. Bring your right shoulder even. If you're that advanced, bring your right shoulder in front of your right knee. So that you're fully stretching open, spine twisting here. And change. Turn back to the ground and lift up. Beautiful. Let's bring both feet together. Paschimottanasana. Stretch your chest. Exhale. Just another stretch for your lower or your back body. Let's say this way. Keep stretching forward if this is not where you can reach. It's like in standing. Like I said, you're going to bring your thighs and your belly together, and then you're going to slide forward, right? Okay. As far as you can, obviously. Keep stretching. Okay. 
and grab your feet, your hands. You can also go in different states. You, stage one would be like grabbing the big toes and then the outsides. Stage two and then the third one would be grabbing the wrist. But as long as you push your knees down here, I'll be okay with it. Keep breathing into your lower spine. Change. Okay. So next is frog pose. We're going for this kind of stretch. Um, yeah, let's do the frog first. It's easier. Okay, so your heels a little bit farther apart than your mat. In other styles, there is um, Gurmasana. It's very similar to this one. In ghost tradition, it's a little bit um, more far out. Okay, so you're going to bring your heels a little bit more out. And then you're going to try and bring your arms underneath. For some of my students, this is the maximum. Okay, accepted. You can, if you like, sit on a very stable block and then do it. <laughs> and then you're going to be a little bit further down. But if this is where it is, then just try and work on it. So again, here you want to like not be on the elbow, right? On the triceps would be ideal. So you're not pushing into your elbow joint. And then slide your heels forward as much as you can until you reach the chin forward and down. So your arms are not going up like in Kurmasana. They stay here straight, chin is down. And eventually, butt and heels lift up, but that's, that's the advanced variation. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah, very good. Beautiful. That's your thing. The forward bend. Okay, good. And then slowly come out of this. And now we can do the straddle. Just a little bit deeper, but therefore without the arms. So you're just stretching a little bit more apart, even. And you can start this, if this is hard for you, um, by pushing the hands into the ground, lifting the chest. And start like this. You can also sit here on a block if this is uh, tight. Some of my students, they cannot even, you know, it's normal. They are rounded like this all the time. So they are, even when they stretch back, they're still rounded in the low spine. Can you see that? So you want to get this kind of movement. Otherwise, nothing else is going to happen. So you want to first elevate the seat on a block and then stretch the chest up really high. So you can get this pelvic movement and then eventually I can do a mobility video for that also. I have a good thing for that, but that's not for now. And, and then eventually you want to walk forward just as much as you can. It depends on your practice, you know. And just breathe into that stretch. If you can, you can grab your toes here. Bring them down, that's the ghost way. Or grab the outsides of your feet and flex them up. More like Ashtanga. Change, okay, slowly come back up. Beautiful. Now we're gonna bring the hands underneath the knees and slip them back up together. Beautiful. I'm gonna do it just a tiny bit more hip opening just because it's so common to have tight hips. Um, so you can bring your right foot up. Let's do it first this way. This might seem extreme, but it's gonna make that other stretch easier, okay? So you're gonna grab this foot. This is called grab, uh, cradle the baby. So if you want to, um, if you cannot uh, grab your foot in this position, like I'm gonna show you soon, then just hold it like that and just try and relax your leg, but keep the shin parallel to the floor and the chest up. 
Yes, that's good. And if you can, if you're more advanced, you can grab the elbow in the, uh, the foot in the elbow crease. <laughs> Keep the chest up and breathe. You good? So start, start, yeah, it hurts? Okay, no problem. Just stay there. Good, and then this is what we did on the floor, right? So we're gonna try to get that leg to the chest again. Mine is also pretty tight today. All right. And then from here, you just lay your baby down onto your leg into anchored to knee pose. So, foot is flexed, knee technically going to that other foot. Not happening in me either today. If you sometimes lift the hip a few times, then it can click back. But sometimes it's just, you know, it's not a given. We have to accept where we are. If this is way too much pain, you can bring it in front, just in front. Mm -hmm. and then come for it, right? So, and then we have the same as with the open legs. You start like this. And if you reach this hip tilt, then you can come forward and maybe just walk like this and like this. Your hand underneath your chin. I'm trying to lift the chest more. Lengthen the spine. Change. Okay, slowly. Get up. Other side. Oh. <laughs> Bring the other baby into your arm. So this can be also stretched out if that's better for you. And you bring this in your elbow crease or in your hands like before, right? Important is just don't round your lower spine too much. Otherwise, you have to support only with the lower spine. That's not a good idea. Belly in, chest up, right? Okay, good. So cradle your baby, shin parallel to the floor until you reach your chest, if you can. And then slowly lower down. Now we're going to have to bring the other leg in again on this leg. As I said, lift your hips if you feel like this is not happening for you or bring the leg forward in front of you, okay? Lift the chest. And exhale slowly, come forward. And breathe. Your hand under your chin if you like. Just letting go of the neck and the shoulder tension sometimes helps a lot with the, with the hips. Breathe. Lower spine relax. Change. Okay. Very good. Very nice. Okay. Stretch the legs out and go like this. It helps a little, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Just um, one more thing. We're just going to go into a pigeon stretch just because lots of people like to do it. <laughs> so bring your right knee in and um, the left back leg behind. I also have a very good mobility drill for that one, but not today. We're just doing asana. So flex the right foot in front. If you have knee trouble, even more so bring the foot forward and maybe just sit on a block because if mostly if the knees hurt and the foot is in, that's when it hurts a lot, right? Lift the chest up. And just lower down wherever you feel comfortable, something like this. I would keep my right leg activated. So a lot of 
people teach it differently. They just fully relax on it. I, if I do that, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good for me. So, so you can do whatever feels good for you. Push the heel back. Of course, if you're super flexible in this way, obviously you can just relax. <laughs> and then slowly bring your hands back up. Good. And let's, um, we can first grab the foot. Let's just do an easy stretch. So you're gonna bring your elbow around that foot and grab from the upper back behind your head side. Grab your hands. If this is happening for you, wonderful. If not, like this is fine too. Lean the head back. Good. And for the people who are more advanced, you can grab your foot, either easy grip around the big toe or around the foot and rotate the left elbow up. So your, your knee should be way back more. If it hurt, yeah, try and align your knee more to the side, back side. Yes, if it hurts, then rather don't do too much. Yeah, exactly, good, better. It's still a little far out. So, this is just an up to. I don't feel very back bendy today, too. <laughs> and then you sit parallel to this um, mat with your heel in between the both knees and bring all the weight forward. We did this before, this leg breaking, grabbing the foot and bring it down beside your hip. If that's not happening, it's fine, just kick against it or try and bring it closer. That's good too. If it hooks underneath your rib cage or somewhat hooks, you can sit back again. But if not, stay with the weight on your hand it's going to make it much easier to be here. Okay, beautiful. And then bring it back. Push against the floor. Straighten your both legs. Stay here for a moment. You can switch your legs up and left leg forward. Okay, let's wrap it up after that. We can just do a back bend in the finishing sequence. So, right hip back, right leg straight behind you. Lift your chest and try and reach forward with a straight spine or with a lifted spine, I should say. And come down if that feels okay for you. Lift back up, good. And then bend your right knee. We can first do that easy kind of pigeon variation, bringing the elbow around your foot and the left arm up, back behind, grab, kick against your elbow, right? And then lean back behind. Or if you are more flexible in the shoulders, grab either big toe, shoulder rotation, the elbow out. Please be careful if you don't know how to do this. I will cover it in a different video. I'm not gonna explain it now. Then you just do a kickback variation like this. If you know how to do it, bring it up. And kick back. Until your head can reach. Yeah, that's good still. Your knee was out, right? So you want to bring it in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. 
And then we are doing the leg um, breaking. I'll, I'll, sh I'll come to the side. You stay where you are. And you just um, bring your both knees in one line and the heel is in the center of the both knees. You lean your weight forward and you bend your right knee just like you did before. Now exhale, push it a little bit down. If it hurts anyway, you always have the option to kick back. Otherwise, push down more. The weight is still in the front. Only for those who are very comfortable, you can sit back. I'm not completely hooking. It's a little bit hooking. <laughs> we didn't do advanced, so it's just intermediate. Okay, bring it back, right? Nobody has to do this. <laughs> and uh, beautiful. Good. Okay, relax your legs. Let's shake them out one more time. I'm going to do a little back bend. I'm going to turn around. You can do as you wish on me. And we're going to lay down back. Relax on the back for a second and bring the feet close to your butt. Good. So the first stage would be to lift the hips until you can wiggle your shoulders back together. Your chest coming to your um, chin. And then you can bring your hands straight interlaced underneath your body. Your knees stay parallel and just lift up as high as possible. Or if you want to go further, you bring your hands next to your ears. And you're going to push against the floor, lift up into Urva Danurasana. And breathe your way forward into the hands. So you're going to push from the legs. Good, Ayumi. Very nice. And slowly lower down. Very nice. Bring your knees in. Make a little circle to the right on your sacrum. And then a little circle to the left. If it cracks, tiny cracks is good. It's relaxing. And then bring your legs up. Cross your legs, eager pose. If you can't do this, if you cannot hook, you can just bring your knees together and to the side. Okay? Otherwise, it's feet crossed, legs crossed. The right leg is on top. And then you're going to the left side and bring your arms to the side. Breathe. Now you can look up or you can look to the side, um, the side where your legs are not. But center is fine too. Whatever is good for your neck, do what's good for you. And try and lift the knees as high up as the belly button. And just keep breathing into your lower spine. Have you forgotten your intention already? The one that you had in the beginning. It's always good to remember throughout the practice. If you have a great intention that is not a goal, but an intention, and you try and detach from the outcome, that is where you find succeed okay bring your success and then bring your left arm uh, sorry leg over your right leg and then cross over to the side again if that's not an option both knees to the side no problem it's the same it's just the one is stretching a little bit more in the glutes the other is stretching a little bit more in the lower spine it's all good 
Breathe your left shoulder down. I know most yoga styles actually turn the head. I like to keep my head in the center here. Most of the times. Just relax into your lower spine. Change. Okay, let's go back. So we're just going to do a tiny finishing sequence, right? So you're going to turn around on the belly and come onto a kneeling position. We're going to do a shushasana. If you didn't do headstand before, you can learn it with me. But you take it easy, right? <laughs> so grab your elbows and then grab your hands just right in front of you. So I, I will show you something you can all do and then we'll see. Head down, push your elbows down and straighten your legs and walk your feet closer to your elbows. So what everyone can do is just bending one knee up and bringing the foot closer to the butt or even alternate then with the other or even go both knees close to the chest and feet to the butt. If you are a little bit more brave, you can lift up one leg and stretch it up and then alternate with the other, always keeping one foot down. If you want to go pike and you know how to do headstand, eventually you want to go both legs together at the same time. Make sure your elbows are not opening up too much. They should be right under your shoulders. And the top of the head in between your ears should be down on the ground. Your shoulders away from your ears. And your spine should be straight. Most people try and like hinge forward and like because they're scared to fall. Just try and stretch up as if you were carrying a heavy book on your head and you're like pushing it up to stretch the spine up. It's the same, just upside down. And then find your calm right here. You can close your eyes if you're more advanced. Try and relax into this stretch, stretching up. So my legs are still a little bit activated, but I'm totally relaxed in my mind and my all the muscles I'm not using. Ayumi, you're doing so great. <laughs> Slowly. Ayumi didn't learn headstand until a while ago, and she's really doing great. Okay, slowly bring your knees down and relax. Most people prefer to do child pose after headstand. So you can rest your head for a moment. And then come up, turn around onto your back. And that's the last couple of poses. Shoulder stand, so you're going to bring your legs over your head. Sometimes here, um, people cannot even touch the floor. That's normal. So just it just means your low back is tight. Just try, you know. You don't have to reach to do the pose. Bring your hands down and wiggle your shoulders together again. So very important, there's no pushing the neck down. It's just shoulders, okay? Shoulders then. The head is, the back of the head is touching the floor and pushing down. Neck is relaxed. Bring your legs up. I would prefer you try and do both legs together. Most of my students try and cheat one leg than the other. It's not good for you. This is a very easy pose. So unless you're having a big trouble in this pose, I would rather have you try to both legs at the same time 
and soon in headstand you will be easily both legs up, right? It's the same thing. Okay, push your shoulders down. Try and really bring that chin to your chest. And again, you stretch it up, but you try and relax everything that you're not using. Your feet are pointed. You're a little bit squeezing your legs. Breathe. Shoulders push. Good. If you're more advanced, you can straighten your arms. Interlace fingers. You don't have to. It's not important. Bring your arms over the head if you're advanced. Or next to your thighs. Good. And then slowly lower your legs down into Halasana. Push your heels away from your body. I'm straight. Now you can do this by supporting your back. And if you have a lot of lower back pain, because it's always tight and now you're stretching it, then it's fine to support. Otherwise, try and straighten your arms. Both legs squeeze together, push away from your face. And then, Karuna Padasana knees down. So you want to reach either the floor or your arms or your hands underneath, whatever is working out for you, okay? Lean more weight into your shoulders, uh, sorry, in your knees. It's kind of shoulders too, but... And then straighten your legs again. One last Supta Konasana. So open your feet and then bring your arms out to grab the big toes. Now, if you like bent knee and stuff, then maybe just keep holding your spine and try and straighten your legs. Maybe they're in the air. If you are that flexible and you can hold your big toe, push your shoulders down, straighten the legs and stretch the spine up. Breathe. Good, okay. <laughs> Slowly bring the feet together and roll very slowly down. Vertebra by vertebra, so slow. So your back gets the chance of cracking every vertebra that is not in line yet just because you're relaxing your muscles and then one foot and then the other straightening your legs after a deep forward bend you don't have to do a core leg dropping you can just do it one by one, you know? It's relaxing the sacrum. You can keep your heels apart now, your hands apart, arms by your sides. Relax your neck. Now, you might feel a tension or a heating up in your neck and shoulder. It's normal because we are not used to do shoulder stand so much. So, Trust in the process that is its blood flow is nothing bad, it's something healing. It will take care of the tension, try and let it go, it will get better. Five minutes, ten minutes, it'll be gone. Relax all the way. And just breathe 
as little as possible. Just when you're sleeping, no more forcing your breath, no more nothing, just heavy, gentle. Relax. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Ayumi. <laughs> um, you can send me whatever question you have if there's something popping up. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the practice we did. Thank you for coming. Subscribe if you like. And I see you next time on the mat.